Coming up next on Hands-On Windows, we're going to take a quick look at Start 11, which is arguably the most popular third-party utility for Windows today. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is is Twit. Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt. And in this very special episode, (laughs) we're going to talk with Brad Sams of Stardock about their Start 11 utility, which is arguably the most popular third party Windows utility available today. So, to do this, we did a screen grab together um, where he shows off the application, how it works, why you might want it, et cetera. So, let's just dive right in. So I'm here with Brad Sams, who is the general manager of Stardock Software. Uh, Although to me, he's more than that. We've been friends for quite a while. We were co-workers for several years at BWW Mm -hmm. Media. And um, we've known each other for quite a long time. Hi. (laughs) Thank you for joining us, Brad. Um, You're the first guest I've ever had on this podcast. I'm not even sure how to handle that. It's hopefully the last. (laughs) so we're here today to talk about start 11 which as i recall came up out of the windows 8 full screen start experience brad wardell had this idea sitting in the audience Mm -hmm. this is going to go pretty well and i think today it's one of your biggest software products still so we've done start 10 start 11 since the original start date yep yeah it is definitely uh i would say what Stardock software is probably known for it. It is by far our highest selling app in terms of units. I mean, it's, it's a great product. Right. Uh, you know, obviously I'm pitching it cause that's, I help make specifically this version <laughs> was probably the first one that I really got to put my hands on because right. right. I joined the company. It's almost been three years and yep. start 11 was already in development. And then we've shipped an, an update 2.0. And so mm-hmm. where we're at today is probably the first time I really got to put my hands on, you know, the software development side. Yeah. So how do we, how do we describe this? Obviously it's a start menu replacement, but it's also more than that, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of history here. Actually, as you noted, this came up out of the windows eight era and Mm -hmm. talking with the development team who, who built this app, actually Stardock has another product called window blinds, which at the time was like the the hero app of Stardock software. And so the, the initial consideration was like, this is just going to be a feature of that application. And then (laughs) Windows 8, Windows 8, right? We all know what happened <laughs> yep. there. And so it got broken out into its own thing called Start 8. And then sort of the the downhill progression went from there. And it just kind of exploded and became a brand. And here we are today, how many ever many years later. And mm. uh, it's uh, it's evolved a lot. So the way we kind of look at it is the Start Menu replacement at the end of the day. We replicate all the native functionality with a style called Windows 11 style, but then we really kind of build it out and enhance uh, the start experience as we refer to it to kind of build like, honestly, just what we wanted Windows to do. If you think yeah. about it, like on paper, this app shouldn't exist. Like it, That's it, right. sh- <laughs> it should just be Windows features. So. Microsoft can't stop screwing around with the start menu. And every time they do, they upset people who are used to some previous functionality yep. that's no longer available. Yeah. One of the ways that we think about it is there's, according to Microsoft, whatever the numbers are, it's like one and a half ish billion people using Windows, right? So Microsoft mm-hmm. has to build a start experience that works for one and a half billion people we can build a start menu that works for the niche group that really wants to customize and personalize their experience because that market is huge when you look at 1.5 billion people total population. So for a small software development shop like us, it's perfect. Right. Yeah. And it's, I mean, this has been a major part of the windows experience for so many people for so long, it's kind of taken over for, uh, you know, a power toy type thing, mm-hmm. or back in the day, the windows essentials type thing, yep. you know, the, the thing that completes the experience. Yep. So I, I mean, if you want, we can just kind of like walk through yeah. it here and then just mm-hmm. kind of go through, um, like this is the config panel, which by the way, is built completely in-house. This is not, this config panel existed before when UI three was even a thing. And <laughs> nice. so like we built our own UI framework and I think all of our apps except one now use this tooling that we have uh, to build out this config window. 
But the idea here is that there's multiple styles. So you can go back all the way to Windows 7, which is actually extremely popular for a lot of corporate customers because they're like, hey, our our C-suite likes Windows 7. Microsoft has changed it. We just want it to be Windows 7 and the IT shop realizes this is the easiest way to do that. And then there's different styles that build out from there. So one of the things we did with Windows 11, obviously, is like, hey, if you want to make it look like Windows 10, you certainly can. And actually, you can make Windows 10 look like Windows 11 if you really want. But where we had the most fun recently are actually these three bottoms. So these Windows app style, the pro style and launcher style. These are actually true what we consider like organic uh, start start menus. And we can you know, you can you just click one, press the start button. And there it is like it's. If you want to go to Windows 10, you can just jump around. That one's not properly configured. It looks like garbage, yeah. but whatever. It's a Windows 10 menu. Yep. Um, I use on all my devices what we call the Pro Style, which has the most amount of customization uh, yeah, of nice. anything we've ever built. So there's actually a lot going on here. Let me close the background so it's a little easier to see. But this is... Uh, we spent a lot of time trying to design these menus to be professional looking, which is why we call it the Pro Style. And there's a lot of functionality. Like one of the things here is icon tinting, which is now an iOS. Uh, we had icon tinting before that was a thing, right? You, right. you can just right mouse click anywhere you go to appearance. I love this stuff and you pick any color and boom, they all change. You can do individual icons. You can do anything you really want, uh, when it comes to this. And of course you've got search up here, which if you do like power, whatever, uh, it's our own search experience. This is not Microsoft's. We built our own tooling, our own indexing to surface mm -hmm. things up. If you use Microsoft Edge, which I don't have any tabs open with power, it'll actually search five open your five most recent open tabs will show up in the search as well. Nice. And if you use everything search engine, it'll actually use uh, that as well to power the background instead of our stuff. So if you if you're big, so you don't have everything. the search highlights junk that's in the default Windows at ten or eleven yeah. search. <laughs> no web stuff <laughs> other than your tabs. No web. Yeah. No MSN content. None of that. Right. It's really just trying to be, just what again. It, what someone might actually want. It, it, we just tried to think like if Windows didn't have if Windows was still a hundred bucks and there were no ads in Windows and Microsoft could feel un unleash itself from KPIs that say, you know what, drive MSN traffic, drive LinkedIn traffic, drive uh, people right. opening Copilot. What would Windows look like? That That is where we, we typically end up. And so there's all sorts of like pro functionality inside of here. So you can do groups. You can like add a new group if you want down below. Oh, nice. And then inside of a group, you can add tabs. So if you want to, add a folder as a tab. I don't know. You can do steam, uh, recent, just, recent searches, although I haven't done any recent searches. Great, great, you know, demo for me. Um, but you can add tabs, you can add groups, you can add all sorts of functionality to this menu. And if you candidly, typically, if you can think about something you want to do, that functionality is in there somewhere, there's pages and all sorts of things that you can do, um, to the start menu. And of course, you know, flipping styles, this, that carries over. Um, this is actually a very popular style as well. We, we don't, the other thing that I think it's worth pointing out is when you install like a Stardock app, um, yeah. other than some very basic telemetry during installation to make sure the installation worked as expected, like we don't cap, that's it. That's the end of it. Um, so we don't know exactly what styles everybody's running at scale, but we do polling, right? People will, like literal polling. Like when people think like, what do you mean by polling? Like think forum poll, what style are you running? And we know that this style is actually very popular as well. Um, and people, yeah, will, this is uh, a little bit like windows 10, but instead of live tiles, you get the pins and of course all the customization. You yeah. Do. And then of course, you know, you can drag and drop it. <laughs> I like that. You said, of course, yeah. see, I use windows 11 and, uh, that's not a thing. <laughs> yeah. so that's great and again the the launcher style they're very similar but you know just slightly different in ways but again mm -hmm. i almost always go back to the pro style um right. there is like super advanced functionality we won't get into it on this because it involves um some deployment tooling we have however if you want to actually have a locked configuration on all your devices you can right. what you do is you build a style you go to settings and backup and you can actually export your configuration and then what you do is you point your other endpoints to that configuration file. And then you, yeah. then you have one start have experience consistent. on every single device. Nice. That's, so, that's actually good for individuals too, right? Yeah. If you oh, have multiple yeah. computers, you want to replicate, you know, you don't want to have to go in and do every setting yep. uh, every time. 
Yeah, so if I really like this style, what you do is you export a file, you put it on your OneDrive, go to your other device, hit restore settings, grab that file, ingest it, and it will recreate that layout. It's worth pointing out because we do get this question every once in a while. People are like, well, my apps didn't come with it too. It's like, we're not, we can't bring the app with it. (laughs) It's It's, not a, yeah. We're not syncing Photoshop. We're syncing just the configuration and style um, that you have. (laughs) That's something uh, maybe Windows should do. Actually, it does to some degree, but not. Not for desktop stuff. One of the other things, and this falls squarely into the category of we fully expect Microsoft to, I don't know if we want to call it steal this feature or implement this into Windows. So one of the things you cannot do right now in Windows is pin a folder to your taskbar, which is crazy to think about. We've tried to figure this out and it's like, nope. So one of the cool things you can do with Start 11 uh, V2 is you can pick a folder and downloads is almost always the one that people are picking. Mm-hmm. You pick it and you can say, yes, I want to pin that to the taskbar. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. This is a pre-release build. I was like, wait in a second. And then now <laughs> your downloads folder is directly pinned to your taskbar. Oh, <laughs> like it's oh my. like, yeah. you think about it. It's like, you can't do that in windows. You can't even tell Explorer you want a certain folder to be the home view that isn't one of the two or three they allow, right? I mean, this is something I, what you just did is something I do all day long. But you, you know, you open File Explorer, go to the download folder, do your thing, and then you want to, you know, probably copy it or do whatever. Mm -hmm. And yeah, every day. Yeah. One of the other things you can do is very similar is you can actually just pick any folder and it makes a quick launch style uh, folder at the end of the day. So I won't do downloads because downloads is already on the taskbar. Uh, let's just try desktop and what could documents go well? and see what happens here. Let me click yes. Give it a second. There you go. Then you can see just yeah. a quick little simple folder menu it makes it super easy to get to get to your stuff. And again, like this isn't in windows. We added it. It's super helpful. Uh, the downloads is probably the best thing. Like once you realize it, you're like, why, yep. why isn't that there? And then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, you can change the start menu or the start button to see how it looks. One of the other very popular things that we've recently added is to round the corners of the task bar. Very simple, but again, like it changes <laughs> the experience from, yes. as you can see to a more doc like experience. It, yeah. Now it's, superficial but well i'm actually surprised microsoft hasn't gone in this direction yet it'll be windows 12. Uh, and then like all of our startup products there's tons of different options you can you can vary the width and everything else um there's just a lot that you can do and then i don't know if i have it set up to do this or not let's see here one of the other options in here yeah so if you watch the corners here when one of the odd things is if you have a rounded taskbar and you go to a full screen, the corners being rounded is, is a little awkward. So there's actually a setting that we have to animate the, the corners back to being 90 degrees oh, nice. so that it looks, yeah, yeah it looks yeah. more professional at the end of the day. Hmm. So yeah, taskbar bins, you got search. This is where I mentioned the everything. And again, it's just, mm-hmm. if there's a setting you want to change in the start launch experience, it's, it's in here somewhere. There are literal millions of combinations when you put everything together that you can do. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just finding the right configuration uh, at the end of the day. You can change how things launch. You can change what different clicking does. And of course there's setup and backup. And at the end of the day, it it just allows you to make windows just a little bit more personal, a little bit more uh, productive is the way we, we kind of tend to move through start 11. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it, boggles my mind that microsoft hasn't done at least some of this <laughs> you know yeah. um that's uh, rather incredible so as far as getting this um i know you sell it outright but it's also part of object desktop yeah suite. so there's like yeah. there's a couple different ways you can just buy it i think it's i think right now it's 10 bucks uh, and that's a lifetime thing mm-hmm. so it's 10 bucks and when we say lifetime we always have to qualify it it's lifetime of the product, not lifetime of you. Um, <laughs> so it's yes. the version two, you pay 10 bucks. You will not have to ever pay $10 again to get version two. Yeah. Uh, but you've other, done version two, one, et cetera. So that's included. It's yeah. Two so actually, anything. You know. So two dot one, two dot two, we just released two dot one actually mm-hmm. this week or around this time mm-hmm. uh, that has arm support. So if you have an arm device, now it's fully supported and it involves all two dot oh releases. If we, we don't, we aren't building start 11 version three right now, but if it ever did, it would technically not include that. 
Uh, the other way to get it is through Object Desktop, which is our suite of apps. So it's one price, but it is an annual subscription. But then you get all of our apps um, to use. So right, right. That's nice. the other way so, to do um, it. We should, maybe at some point we'll have you back to do some of these other apps, right? Because it's not just Start 11. I mean, what are some of the other... Top. Yeah, so our uh, the most popular yeah. apps for Stardock by far are Start Eleven, uh, mm-hmm. Fences Five, and Multiplicity. So Multiplicity okay. does if you have actually I use it every single day. If you have multiple computers, mm-hmm. it allows you to take control of other computers, one keyboard, one mouse. It's a virtualized KVM for people who are familiar with that. And there's I will hint there is a new release coming in the near very near future. That mm-hmm. adds a bunch more functionality. Multiplicity three was released. I want to say 2015. And so it's getting a proper refresh here uh, in right. the near future. And then fences is pro- so like when you say what's Stardock's most popular app, like start 11 is like, but in terms of volume way up there, mm-hmm. but in terms of like corporate deployments, fences yeah. is huge on the corporate so that's side. Interesting. So this, I think of this as sort of desktop organization. Is that? Yeah. So what fences does is it allows you to organize the icon, literal icons on your desktop. And it also has a feature mm-hmm. called folder portals. Now, if you use a lot of icons, it allows you to group them by PDFs, whatever you can create custom folders. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of functionality built in there, but where this comes into huge help is standardizing a desktop. I'll tell you like one of the, the premium examples that we use all the time because it does very well is actually in hospitals. So, right, a lot of nurses, doctors, or whatever people log into a machine with fences. You can guarantee that a certain icon will always be in the same position. It doesn't matter the the device, how many monitors, the resolution, the version of Windows, that specific apps will always be in a certain spot on a screen, which for a doctor or a nurse is actually super is, helpful. Is potentially life-saving, right? Yes. I mean, they're, they're not there to look at Windows versions and figure stuff out. They just want to open a screen and get a, you know, get going. And yep. so there's a lot of deployment tooling around that. And actually one of the things we're bringing together in house now is what Stardock does very well is actually helps you just standardize the desktop. If you yeah. want to, if you want to have a standard start experience across every device and mm-hmm. you want icons to always be in the same configuration and look the same way on every single device, I don't think anybody on planet earth does it better than us. Like that is, <laughs> that is what we do exceptionally well at the end right. of the day. Nice. Yeah. Cool. I, love, I mean, I love Start 11. That's why, you know, I wanted to do this. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I'm sorry it took so long. But yeah, no, it's, um, you know, there's a right time and place for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Fair enough. But Start 11, uh, <laughs> I, this was, for me, it'll always be near and dear to the heart because probably like you, like you were with uh, Brad Wardell when mm-hmm. he's like the birth of the app, right? Like you're sitting right. there and like, hmm, there's a need for this. And then I walk into Stardock take the new role and like, okay, let's build a new start experience. And like, that's when I first get to say like, it's not me sitting there like one word going to do like, it was a lot of discussion with the team yeah. discussion with our users. And, and I mean this like genuinely, like if there's something that's not in windows and the start stuff that you guys want, like, let us know, like we have the right. expertise to do this. And a lot of the features are driven based off of the feedback that we get, because if our customers want it, then clearly other people want it. And it, we're the company that can do it. Yeah. It, it's interesting to me that this wasn't a one-off, you know, they eventually added the start menu back to eight, yep. eight, one, whatever. And obviously windows 10 had the start menu and it, but every version they've just kept chopping stuff off, especially windows 11, very aggressively. And it's just really rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. So I, yeah. The customization here is amazing. Yeah, it just, if, I don't know. I, I, I really enjoy this stuff. And so getting a chance to talk about it with more people is always exciting. And yep. um, you know, we'll see awesome. what we have coming down the, down the pipeline here for future updates. Cool. Well, thank you, sir. Well, thank you. Well, hopefully you found that useful and entertaining. Uh, we'll have a new episode of Hands on Windows every Thursday. You can find out more at twit.tv slash HOW. Thank you for watching. Thanks especially to all of our Twit members. We love you. See you next week.